What's up, everyone? I'm Ernest Baker, Editor-in-Chief at Front Office Sports, and I want to welcome you to Second Acts, a new series where we chat with former athletes about everything they've accomplished in their sport, but also how they're thriving after the game in their second act. Joining me today is world-famous basketball player and ABC ESPN analyst Jalen Rose. Jalen gained his fame as the sixth ranked high school basketball player in the country before taking his talents from the southwest side of Detroit to home state University of Michigan, where the legend of the Fab Five was born. Long known for his post-game quotes and extensive work in the media, Jalen continues to show his versatility in the broadcast booth, the entertainment world, and as a philanthropist. Jalen, so happy to have you here today. What is going on, my man? What up, though? Thanks for the love. I appreciate you having me on as a founder of a high school, support black colleges, and you know I really like sports and or pain if I'm rocking a Lions cap or really love Detroit. So what up, though? Thanks for having me on. Yo, thank you for joining us. We got a lot to talk about today. I feel like you are a perfect example of what it means to have a second act ever since your playing career Things have taken off for you in a whole new realm. But I do want to start with the game. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got into basketball in the first place? Wow, I think it was Jay-Z and Sauce Money. They had a song, I'm what the game made me, not what the fame made me. I was born into it. My father was the number one pick in the 1967 draft, Jimmy Walker. Same draft as Clyde Frazier and Earl De Pearl. And even though I never met him, basketball was in my blood. So I was always one of those youngsters at the time. This is pre-technology, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, boys and girls, this is pre-internet. This is pre-Google. I'm one of the human beings that actually played basketball when I nailed a milk crate to a telephone pole. You want to check your endurance? Try to cut a hole in the bottom of a milk crate. I'm telling you, it'll take a long time. Watching cartoons or whatever, I'm dedicated. I'm doing push-ups. During the commercials, like, I feel like I'm going to the league. And at some point, I looked at my mother, and I was like, I'm going to the NBA. And she was like, I believe you, baby. And we just made a pact. And she joked with me, but you'll never be better than Magic. And that was always our joke, because that was her favorite player, and that was my favorite player. Uh, I'm sure that was quite the journey. What are some of your favorite memories when you think back to college? Because I know you're just talking about the come up. I want to hear it to the point where you on and you, you know, you're a star in college, you're hooping, you're in the league. What is the stuff that you remember from that, that you just look back and you smile thinking about? So I'm so very fortunate that uh, basketball like exposed me to so many different things and, and so many different people. And uh, I'm just truly fortunate that it's always been the soundtrack to my life. In high school is where really like, I got a chance to nurture who I am before the Fab Five. Like people uh, understand that I was a member of the Fab Five, but like I went to Detroit Southwestern, and before me it was Antoine Jobert and Anderson Hunt, who was the Final Four MVP when he played for UNLV. So I idolized them. But being a national champion in high school and playing with those guys, and then going to be the fifth member of the Fab Five and doing all of the things we were able to do, our black shoes, our black socks, our ball heads, you know, putting on for the culture and uh, winning some games, throwing some lobs, having fun doing it. That sounds like a good time. When you get to the league, what are the memories that come with that? Because now, you know, you probably got your first big check. You're getting to travel. What do you think when you, when you think to the 90s, early 2000s, that time? Like, what are the memories that come with that era? playing ball and getting drafted by the Nuggets and breaking their rookie assist record that I still hold to this day and playing in the rookie game and then learning about the business and getting traded and getting to Indiana and getting 15 DMPs with Larry Brown and then being coached by Larry Bird and, as you mentioned, making it to three straight Easter Conference um, finals and playing in the finals and playing against some of the greats like MJ. Um, it was an amazing journey. Um, like any player, you wish you would have went undefeated, made more money, and won more championships. And I, I feel no different. But for me to be able to play 13 years and put in some of the work that I was able to put in, I'm really proud of what I was able to accomplish. When you look at all that, you look at college, you look at the league, 13 seasons, everything you were able to do, what do you feel like was the most valuable lesson? Because now you're in your second act, and you have to apply those lessons to – 
a different line of business. And for you, what was something that sticks with you? You encounter a lot of people. And the one thing that I learned is that they come into your life for four reasons. To add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Choose wisely. When you look down at your phone, somebody texting you, ask that question. Is this person adding value? Is this person subtracting my time or my energy? Is this person multiplying my value? Or is this person here to divide and conquer and gossip? That's your answer right there. And anything that gets in the way of your goals or your dreams, then you shouldn't allow that to be a distraction. And the other thing I learned is to multitask and try to master the morning. And what that does is meaning you got to go to bed the night before. And so if you feel like you're going to roll out of bed 10, 11, and 12, and all of a sudden chase all of your goals, that ain't going to happen unless you just work midnights. <laughs> that, that, that's, the, that's the only way that's going to happen. And, and never settle. That's one of the things I always did. Like, while I was playing in the league, I was working in the media. I'm not going to act like I was the first. I remember doing Best Damn Sports Show with my brother John Sally. While I was still in the league, I pitched BET Mad Sports the idea to cover the finals for them when it was the New Jersey Nets and the Lakers. So, like, being passionate about what you do, investing in yourself, because this is what I went to college for. It was my major in college, radio, TV, film. Did you always know that at some point I'm going to have to figure out what I'm doing after sports, what I'm doing after basketball, and you knew your second act was going to be media? Here's what I knew. Failure wasn't an option. And I was going to throw so many things at the dartboard that I was going to make sure something stick. And that's got to be the mentality. It can't be like this is what I want to do for a living. I want to be in the NBA, and then I'm not trying to do other stuff. And so I always – Took pride in trying to be a great basketball player, but I always was a good student also. I was an honor roll student. I made the dean's list in college. And so doing this multimedia thing, when you grow up poor, you ain't got nothing to do but dream. And it wasn't no internet. It wasn't no social media. You got to think about games to play, think about foods you're going to make up to eat, like sugar water and mayonnaise sandwiches, and think about your goals. And I remember being a youngster playing Madden playing NBA Live, playing NBA Jam, having a room full of room full of homies. Whoever lose, you got to commentate the next game. You can't be falling asleep. You can't be, uh-uh. You got to commentate the next game. And while I wanted to keep the room engaged, that was for me too. And so as I started to gravitate into this space, I was working for multiple networks while I was in the league, BET, um, Best Damn Sports Show, MTV Movie Awards. I worked for NFL Network, uh, Top Rank Boxing, TNT. I was doing studio and sideline. I was the first former athlete with a podcast. That was a, I was literally doing NBA Tonight for ESPN and doing multiple shows. I saw Bill Simmons starting Grantland. I went and pitched him the idea to do a podcast, and it used to be called The Rose Report, and that was like 2007. Okay, so you, you had the vision early. Correct. I, was, I remember starting a YouTube page around 2007, 2008, Jalen TV. And there were a few people that were, like, getting into the space and understanding it was happening. And so while I was playing in the league and then working in the media and then I retired and worked full-time at ESPN, I started a production company, Three Tier Entertainment. I produced a couple of vignettes for Jeep. I also executive produced uh, a, a comedic series loosely based on my life called Jalen versus everybody that had everybody in it. I just joked the other day that Larry Bird was waving. He didn't make it to the top 75. But when I called him to be in Jalen versus everybody, legend came through. But in all honesty, um, yeah, just, just falling in love with the craft and having so many people believe in me, hire me, give me opportunities. So many great coworkers, so many great other analysts and hosts and people to tee me up and show love to me. So I just really appreciate the journey. And this will be my 20th consecutive year covering the NBA Finals on TV, not in print, 
not on radio, on TV. And I survived battles like taking down somebody when I talked about how much they averaged in high school. Like, that's me. That's who. If Raina's thinking about retirement, she'll get some help from Fidelity to envision what's possible and balance risk and reward. And with a clear plan, Raina can enjoy wherever she's headed next. That's the planning effect from Fidelity. Second acts for you is kind of like second nature. You've been hustling your whole life. You know what this is about. But then I have to ask, what has surprised you? Because you sound like you've been prepped for this. You sound like you know what it's like to have 10 different hustles. But what's the one thing that surprised you about this life after basketball? Continuing to break barriers is uh, something that was important to me. Um, being the founder of a charter high school that's tuition free and open enrollment, that's a nine through 16 model that's been going for a decade is something that was surprising to me. And uh, I didn't see that happening in my past. When I look back at the kid at Michigan with the, uh, the bad skin, the bad teeth and the bald head, I didn't think he'd be a founder of a school. So that that was something that surprised me. We've talked a lot about your career, media, playing on the court. I know philanthropy is really a big part of your mission, too. You got the Jalen Rose Foundation, Jalen Rose Leadership Academy. Can we talk about that for a bit? You know, as much as I love the flex, I also want to hear about what you're doing for other people, how you're giving back and uh, what your purpose is there. For me, like giving back to my community and trying to do what I can to help influence others in a positive way has always been a part of my motivation, always been a part of my journey. And so being a founder of the Jalen Rose Leadership Academy in 2011, and the special thing about our school is we're not just servicing young people while they're in high school. We also service them when they graduate. And that's why we call it a nine through 16 model. That's secondary education. Community college, college or university, trade school, military, whatever they decide to get into, we're still there to support them. So right now, we serve as 1,000 young people. And just to see them chase their goals, pursue their dreams, come in and try to figure out their lives and put themselves in position to learn a trade, play a sport, um, take care of their academics. Also, um, have an internship, uh, a college experience, like just trying to uh, create and help hone like well-rounded young people. When you look at the pictures of when I founded JRLA, ain't no sponsors behind me. Dave being the mayor standing right there with me and we cutting the tape. We invested regardless. And so what I'm now saying is we're trying to raise $10 million to expand our facility. And what is that going to do for the scholars? I'll tell you. I don't like the fact that they've played sports, in particular basketball, for 10 years. And it's really unfortunate that they've never had a home game. I took over a middle school and converted it into a high school. We have what you call a caffeinasium, where the tables come out of the walls. You know what I mean? And shout to Lear for help making that happen. And shout to our number one corporate sponsor, Jeep, $1.5 million over this 10-year period. And Tom Gores and Platinum Equity of the Detroit Pistons. And, like, th there have been people dedicated to our mission. But now it's time to graduate that mission. We need a state-of-the-art facility for a gym. We need two extra classrooms. Right now we currently have rotating teachers. I want to create a meditational and a, and, and a space for the, for, for, so young people can, 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 can garner therapy and just create a couple of special programs to put our scholars in position to continue to become well-rounded young people and, as we like to say, inner learners and exit as leaders. I know you're a natural, Jalen. I know that you know, you, you're good. You know how to be on camera. But surely you've had to work at it. Like, what is it like in your second act trying to get better as an on-camera personality, because as much as you are a natural, I know you had to do some work. Let me tell you, let me, let, let me tell you what I did. I'm going to tell you a secret that I never told anyone. I, I work these fools. And look, I'm not even talking about like being on. I'm talking about honing my craft, getting better. Like changing up my lingo. 
changing up my fashion, having currency with what I say. And there are certain things I do to try to get better. Like I write jokes. Like I, I'm, I think I'm going to do some stand up at some point. And it's not even really because I'm trying to like turn it into a career. It just, if you're doing this, it helps like your deliveries and your punchlines. Like somebody watching me talk be like, oh, he talking slow. I could talk fast if I want. I could talk slow if I want. Sometimes I just want to draw you in to what I'm about to say. And then boom, a lot of people say jokes, but they don't know how to land them. Or a lot of people have are funny, but they don't know how to deliver. Comedic timing. Correct. And so that goes into what we do. I'm not, the E is for entertainment. You know, anybody can look at a box score like, hey man, yeah, 24 points and nine assists. Uh, you know, what a great dunk, you know? And so that's things that I do that help me have 20 years in the game and continue to reinvent myself. What does it mean to get into these other things outside of media? Because it sounds like, you know, growing up, you did so many different things. When you were playing basketball, you started thinking about media. Now that you are a media superstar, what are you thinking about film, writing, comedy, whatever? Like, how seriously do you take those other avenues? When you've functioned in that space for as long as I have, basically professionally since 1994, but really living it my entire life, there were so many other sides of me, so many other sides of my brain that I still needed to activate. And so writing a column for the New York Post, the oldest publication in the United States, plus doing a podcast called The Renaissance Man, who's one of the top rated podcasts in the entire industry. I looked down at my phone a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, number 19 in the world? I'm like, wow. Like there are a zillion people with podcasts. And so I created something and I'm really fortunate that I'm doing right now that ain't nobody, nobody, nobody on my Spike Lee, nobody. And you know, by the way, I could be humble, I could be meek, but sometimes if you don't toot your own horn, the music ain't playing. So let me just tell you something. And plus we brought you here today to turn up because really this is a lesson for the viewers. So I right. want you to give it to us Can raw and unfocused. what they want. So I'm doing two podcasts. Both highly rated, Jalen and Jacoby, sports, renaissance men, entertainment, fashion, culture, analysts on a seasonal sports show, NBA Countdown. That's a big stage, Christmas Day in the NBA Finals. Those are the biggest stages in basketball, right? Help launch a show, get up. Now, the show is more from now into like more of a football seasonal show, but to kick the show off, the show used to be three hours, not two, and it used to have one analyst, not 10, me. So what I remember, I was talking about Blanton, I was talking about Urban Meyer, I was talking about whatever was Kurt, Colin Kaepernick, okay? So that's the sports side. And then I mentioned to you, writing a column and doing the Renaissance Man. Um, Wolfgang Puck, Gail King, Killer Mike, Big Sean, 50 Cent. Have like the, 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 your favorite, Gabrielle Union, your favorite industry tastemakers, tastemakers been on that show. So let me know, wake me up with somebody writing a column, doing two podcasts while juggling three TV shows. I don't know who made this song, but it was like at the same damn time, at the same damn time. That's future, by the way. Oh yeah, that's my guy Hendrix. What up, though? Man, you answer everything with, uh, you know, all that energy we were looking for. I really appreciate you coming in here, sharing your truth. You got such an inspiring story, Jalen. It's really great. It's really great to hear. I think you're setting a great precedent for what athletes should be in their second act. And it's been really great to have you. I thank you, Front Office Sports thanks you. It's been amazing. Appreciate the love.